How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I want to show you how to quickly solve that small leak you might have coming out of your temperature and pressure relief valve on your water heater. Now whether your valve is located off the side, which is the most common, like mine, or off the top, these steps will be the same and approachable by any homeowner. So I'll take you through a two-step troubleshooting process. The first step, really no tools, and hopefully this will actually get your problem solved. But if it doesn't, I'll show you the internals of a temperature pressure relief valve, how it actually works, and then that will better inform you to help troubleshoot your situation. And then we will also cover the second step, which will definitely fix your issue if that first one does not. Step one is super simple, and to stop the leak, all we're gonna do is try to exercise the relief valve by pulling on this lever. When you pull on that lever, you should get flow of water, so make sure you have a five gallon bucket. I removed my drain line. You don't have to, just make sure you have a bucket that could catch the water as you open up this valve. Now for my valve here in step one, flushing doesn't look too promising because I'm not getting any flow when I actually open up the valve and move the lever. All that's happening here is if we look internally, the small rod goes to the actual seal that goes against a seat and then a spring presses that seal down. This spring is actually what controls how much pressure it would take to overcome the force on that spring and that is associated to the setting of 150 psi on this valve. If the internal pressure is past 150 psi, that would be enough to actually force that spring to compress and then open up a path for this water. Now, if you have a small leak, there's a good chance that you might have a little sediment caught right at that seal between the seat and the seal, which if we could flush that loose and get the sediment out, then hopefully that seal can sit against the seat and your leak would stop. That's the idea, so flushing it out is our first step to try to get things to seal back up and stop your overall leak. Now, these valves also have a temperature part. So this white probe is associated to the 210 degree Fahrenheit set point. What that means is this probe will expand at 210 degrees Fahrenheit to open up the valve, ensuring that the water inside the water heater cannot get to 212, which is the boiling point. It'll expand out, open up that seal, and then allow water to flow out of the tank. So if that flushing did not work for you, we gotta go on to step two, and that is to actually change out the valve. You'll turn off your cold water supply, turn down your temperature setting all the way to the lowest setting to make sure the burners don't turn on. We're gonna connect up a garden hose to our drain valve, and then you could run that hose outside. I run it to a bucket in the garage. So I'll just put it in the garage, and the garage is actually a little bit lower, which does help out to drain things down. One key part of draining though, is we gotta make sure we're not pulling a vacuum or nothing's gonna come out of the tank. So to open that up, instead of just opening a hot water fixture in the house, which doesn't always work the best, I just loosen up the fitting on the hot water side and allow air to enter the tank, which then should start to drain your tank. And here I drain into a five gallon bucket. So I know how many gallons I drain out because I'm looking to drain out at least 10 gallons. So now with the water level below the port for the TMP valve, we can remove it without an issue of water coming out that same port. And then don't forget, if you opened up your hot water side to make sure that you could release that vacuum and actually drain down your water here, tighten that back up. You don't want to forget about that and turn your cold water back on, start pressurizing the system, heating up the water, and you forgot you have a loose fitting over here. So just go ahead and tighten that up at this point. But now we're gonna remove the actual valve itself. Sometimes easier said than done. This specific unit's about 18 years old. So it's already put in a good service life and there's quite a bit of sediment buildup where I'm gonna to have to upgrade to a much larger wrench to break that loose. And that's even after a little bit of damage there to the old valve. Once I remove that, you'll see the amount of sediment, which is really caked up, and that's what wasn't allowing the valve to open up or water to come out of the valve. So I went ahead and cut it open. I wanna show you what was going on with this failure mode. So here's just the shaft itself. That's the plunger from the temperature part, the temperature approach that expands out and will open the valve if it's past 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And then inside here is where that seal actually would seat down. So if I move the lever, we should see that open up. The problem is when I move the lever, we don't see anything open up. 
And that's because sediment has built up in here where there is no longer a passage for water flow. That is why it's important yearly to exercise your temperature and pressure valve, make sure you flow water out of there and ensure you don't get buildup like this and that your valve will function correctly. Now you will have sediment that you wanna clean out and do not just push that back in the tank or it could gum up your drain valve later on. With a Makita shop valve, I'm gonna pull that sediment and debris out and then with my finger, I'm gonna slowly work that out of the threads and just do multiple cycles working that out, sucking it up with the Makita shop vac, working it out a little more and back and forth until they're clean. Then I'm gonna match up my old valve. Sometimes it's just easy to go down to the home improvement store with your old hardware. For me, it's a two and a half inch shank. And the other critical thing, and most of them are standard, but we wanna make sure it's a 150 PSI, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, this is my old valve, confirming that my new valve also is a 150 PSI on that nameplate and 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So once you've confirmed that, you're ready to install, make sure we put a nice wrap of Tefton tape in the clockwise direction and then we'll go ahead and thread that back into our water heater carefully. And then once it's hand tight, we'll go ahead and tighten that all the way down. And since this is pipe thread and we needed to get it where the outlet is pointed straight down, you'll snug it down and tighten it down, but don't go too far where you might be damaging the port. So now we have our new temperature and pressure relief valve installed and I wanna get the system back up and running. So first you'll make sure you turn on your cold water supply. If you hadn't already, make sure you tighten up the hot water side where we allowed air to enter so we didn't pull a vacuum when we were draining the tank. Make sure your drain valve is closed and then I reinstalled the actual drain line to my temperature and pressure relief valve. Now that was after I did a little test run. So I did open up this new valve. I allowed water to flush out of it and then ensured that it closed completely with no leaks like we had before. And then I did ensure I turned the temperature dial to the previous setting. Be careful, sometimes people just turn it back and you might be turning it to a much hotter setting. And remember your temperature should be at about 120 degrees Fahrenheit to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on who's in your house. If you have young kids, do be cautious. You really don't wanna crank that up or you could have a scolding hazard. So you wanna let the water here come up to pressure, go run hot water, flush out all the air in your lines, make sure you're getting hot water at your different fixtures, and then just check for leaks. We didn't only touch the temperature and pressure relief valve, so make sure there's no leaks anywhere else to ensure your problem's actually solved. Let me know down in the comments which one solved it for you. Was it simply flushing it and you could get the sediment out and get it to reseal? Or did you have to change out your temperature and pressure relief valve? Now I just completed a DIY bathroom remodel in the same rental property for a budget of $1,500. Check out this video right here and I'll walk you through every step in the process just in case you have that project on your to-do list and you want to increase the value of your home. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.